Good evening and welcome to the March 19th meeting of Troy City Council. I'm Marty Baker, <laughs> President of Council. Please silence your electronic devices for the duration of the meeting. We'll begin with the invocation by Mr. Bobby Phillips, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand. Please bow our heads. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for each and every day. You have profoundly blessed us here on earth. Thank you for your tender mercies. Thank you for giving us friends and family to share our joys and our sorrows. We ask you to bless our friends, relatives, brothers and sisters in Christ, and those who are not here with us this evening. Where there is joy, give them continued joy. Where there is pain or sorrow, give them your peace and mercy. Where there is self-doubt, release a renewed confidence. Watch over our troops, our first responders, and please forgive us of our sins. Thank you. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mrs. Knight, please call the roll. Mr. Lutz. Here. Mr. Twist. Here. Mr. Twilliger. Here. Mr. Sievert. Yes, present. Mr. Heath. Here. Mr. Swayzer. Here. Mr. Kendall. Here. Mrs. Oda. Here. Mr. Phillips. Here. All members are present. Mayor Beamish, I believe this evening that you have a presentation to make, and we'll start off with that this well, evening. Well, thank you, Madam President. Uh, first of all, and before I uh, introduce the person who's the recipient, uh, I also want to mention that Rumpke of Ohio, which is our recycling uh, group, and the uh, city of Troy have entered into a program that we look at recycling closely and we reward <coughs> quarterly a recycling recipient who has demonstrated their efforts uh, to recycle. And we all know uh, that that is a good stewardship for protecting not only our environment but making our, uh, you know, our, our city even better uh, for it. So recycling has great benefits, not just for the moment, not with the recycling bins that we have, but for the future generations. And with that, I want to thank uh, Rumpke uh, for entering into this rewards program. It'll be a quarterly uh, program working with Troy residents who have demonstrated uh, that their commitment to recycling is important to them into our city, into our environment. So at this time, I, I first of all want to introduce to you Brent Ball. He is a representative from Runke. He is here today. I consider him the operations manager if he'll come forward. And I also would like to ask uh, Jerry Mullins, who all of us know as, as our street foreman, to come forward. And with that, I would like to introduce to you the recipient of this quarterly uh, Look Who is Recycling reward program. And I'd like, uh, and if there's family members, everybody in the family come forward, but Danielle Metz, and I know Danielle. So Danielle and Hubby are coming forward. And I, I'd want to, yeah. And also, Brent, any comments that they would like to make to the recipients as I get down that way? Here we come. Do you have anything to say to these nice, this nice couple? This nice couple uh, lives in the Southview area. I'm not going to tell the address. <laughs> but you can see a group that's taken pride in recycling. And uh, we want to recognize people in our community that are really have uh, demonstrated, not just said they're going to do something that they have to do something. Jerry sees that. Brent, we thank you for representing Rumkey tonight. And uh, if you want to make the presentation, I've got a special gift bag for you. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Good, now you can go home and go through it. <laughs> <laughs> that would be fun. Thank you, Madam President. He worked at Skyline forever. Thank you, Mayor, and thanks to Rumpke for including Troy in our, this program. 
Also tonight, we have a public hearing on Ordinance 013-2018. Mrs. Knight, please read that ordinance. Ordinance amending section 1137.08F of the codified ordinances of the City of Troy, Ohio, regarding the Board of Zoning Appeal Standards for Variances. And now declare the public hearing open. Is there anyone in the audience who wishes to speak in favor of this ordinance? Is there anyone in the audience who wishes to speak against the ordinance? Seeing none, I declare the public hearing closed. Mrs. Knight, please read a summary of the minutes of the March 5th meeting of Troy City Council. Minutes of Council, March 5, 2018. Director of Golf, Kyer Boer, was introduced. Committee reports, Community and Economic Development Committee recommended that Council adopt Ordinance Number 09-2018, a rezoning from AR to R3B. Finance Committee recommended that legislation be prepared to continue the five enterprise zone agreements as they are in compliance and also to continue the Troy Town Park TIF. Committee recommended legislation be prepared to amend Troy's tax code chapter 171 to comply with the state budget bill. Law and Ordinance Committee recommended that legislation be prepared to permit low speed and under speed vehicles to operate on roadways and public right of way within Troy based on certain stipulations. Committee recommended that Ordinance Number 010-2018 be adopted, establishing the Downtown Riverfront Overlay District. Streets and Sidewalks Committee recommended that consent legislation from ODOT be approved regarding the city participating in a bridge deck ceiling project. Resolution Number R5-2018, accepting recommendations of Tax Incentive Review Council regarding Enterprise Zones first reading and adopted. Resolution Number R6-2018, accept except recommendations of Tax Incentive Review Council regarding the Town Park TIF was given first reading and was adopted. Resolution number R7-2018, consent legislation provided by ODOT to participate in bridge deck ceiling program was given first reading and adopted. Ordinance number 08-2018, rezoning of 8.015 acres was given third reading and was adopted. Ordinance number 010-2018, amending sections of the zoning code was given third reading and adopted, and that would be regarding establishing the downtown riverfront district. Ordinance number 013, 2018, amending the zoning code was given first title reading, and that had to do with <coughs> appeals standards for variances for the BZA. Ordinance number 014, 2018, enacting certain sections of the ordinance had to do with the adoption of low speed and under speed vehicles in the city of Troy was given first reading and was adopted. Ordinance number 015, 2018, amending chapter 171 of the ordinances, income tax code update was given first reading and adopted. Following comments, council adjourned at 7.50 p.m. Are there any additions or corrections to the minutes? Move we accept the minutes. Second. Right. second. It's been moved by Mr. Kendall and seconded by Mr. Sievert to approve the minutes. Mrs. Knight, please call the roll. Mr. Twiss? Yes. Mr. Twilliger? Yes. Mr. Sievert? Yes. Mr. Heath? Yes. Mr. Swayzer? Yes. Mr. Kendall? Yes. Mrs. Oda? Yes. Mr. Phillips? Yes. Mr. Lutz? Yes. Minutes are approved. We'll begin committee reports this evening with the Recreation and Parks Committee and Chairman Brock Keith. Yes, Madam President, thank you. We have uh, two items. The first one uh, is committee members Heath and Terwilliger met March 13th regarding bidding authorization for the Miami Shores Golf Course Clubhouse renovation project. The project was budgeted at $2 million, and the project is currently is, uh, estimated at $1.71 million. A driving range will be in, uh, established from the remaining funds, uh, which is the difference there. It is the recommendation of this committee that legislation be prepared authorizing the Director of Public Service and Safety to advertise for bids and enter into a contract for the Miami Shores Golf Course Clubhouse Renovation Project at a cost not to exceed $1.71 million. That is respectfully submitted by Mrs. Oda, Mr. Terwilliger, and myself as Chair of this. Are there any questions from Council? 
You may continue, Mr. Heath. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, the second item that we have here tonight uh, is committee members Heath and Terwilliger met March 13th to consider the recommendation of the Board of Park Commissioners to permit overnight camping at the Paul G. Duke Park associated with a 24-hour race at the Troy Mountain Bike Area TMBA. Uh, the event will take place July 14th through 15th and some participants may arrive on July 13th. As camping is prohibited by ordinances, council would need to enact notwithstanding legislation to permit controlled temporary camping for this particular event. Uh, it is the recommendation of this committee that notwithstanding legislation be prepared to permit temporary camping at the Paul G. Duke Park for the dates of July 13th through the 15th in 2018. And this is respectfully submitted by Mrs. Oda, Mr. Terwilliger, and myself as chair. Are there any comments or questions from council? Anything further, Mr. Heath? That's all we've got. Thank you. All right, thank you, ma'am. Next reports come from the Streets and Sidewalks Committee and Chairman Bobby Phillips. Thank you, Madam President. On March 13th, the committee met regarding bidding authorization for the McCaig Road Improvement Project, Phase 4. The project area is McCaig Road from the alley west of Lake Street to the I-75 <coughs> overpass. The project scope includes road, <coughs> roadway reconstruction, utility repair, replacement as necessary, a new roundabout at the McCaig Road Dorset Road intersection, and sidewalk curb and gutter. The construction estimate of $1.875 million is less than the $2 million total project budget, and although it may be necessary to have a future reappropriation based on the cost allocation uh, period, $800,000 of that project cost will be funded by an Ohio Public Works uh, Commission grant. It is the recommendation of this committee that legislation be prepared authorizing the Director of Public Service and Safety to advertise for bids and enter into a contract for the McCaig Road Improvement Project Phase 4 at a cost not to exceed the $1.875 million. This is respectfully submitted by Mr. Heath, Mr. Lutz, and myself as Chairman. Are there any questions or comments from Council? Anything further, Mr. Phillips? No, ma'am. Thank you. Utilities Committee has the next report from Chairman John Terwilliger. Thank you, Madam President. On March 13, 2018, this committee met to consider authorizing bidding for a project of rebuilding the drives of the water plant clarifier. The clarifier drives have been in place since 1971 and have been rebuilt once. The project is budgeted in the amount of $163,378. Based on the plans for the project and additional components being required to complete the project, the current project estimate of, is estimated at $200,000. Funds are available within the water fund appropriation. It is the recommendation of this committee that legislation be prepared authorizing the Director of Public <coughs> Service and Safety to advertise for bids and enter into a contract for the water plant clarifier drives rebuild project at a cost not to exceed $200,000. This is respectfully submitted by Mr. Lutz, Mr. Twist, and myself as chair, Chairman of the Committee. Are there any questions from Council? Thank you, Mr. Terwilliger. We now open the meeting for citizen comments. At this time, does anyone in the audience have any questions or comments related to the agenda <coughs> items this evening? If so, please come to the microphone and state your name and address. There is a two-minute time limit at this point in the meeting, and Mr. Kerber is our timekeeper. Amy Shannon, 1560 Windridge Place, Apartment D, Troy. I um, had no intention of coming to speak before council until today happened. My day this morning started with a 59-year-old sick man who walked from the Myers area all the way to Health Partners Free Clinic because we have no viable transportation program, reasonably accessible or uh, financially accessible transportation program in this town. My day ended with a 27-year-old mentally ill man who has spent the last three nights sleeping on the streets in downtown Troy. 
He is a man who's gone to try to find services and try to find help and has gotten none and was literally dropped off at our door. This town has people with needs. This town has people who are suffering right now. And while there's a lot of agencies out there, we can't do everything. We need some support. $1.7 million is three years of a budget for Health Partners Free Clinic. We can run, yes. Excuse me. Um, is this I'm bringing it to the $1.7 million for the okay. Uh, thing. Okay, thank you. Our budget, we could run for three years with $1.7 million and serve all the people of Miami County. I can't imagine what Jessica Eccles at Health Partner, Partners and Hope could do with $1.7 million. All the people, I could give you a story every single day from people in this town who need help. And they all can tell me what kind of help they need. And I have yet to have a single one of them tell me they needed to play golf. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Connor, 1210 South Clay Street, Troy, Ohio. Uh, this has to do with uh, Mayor Beamish and what he was talking about on recycling. And uh, I think it's good that we recycle. But it's been two or three years ago that I brought to Mr. Titherton, Mr. T, uh, <laughs> newspapers from Rensselaer, Indiana, where my aunt lives, and showed them how much money they're making off of recycling the city. They're even, you know, and uh, I said even at that time it was on the news that Montgomery County was giving uh, rewards back if you created a certain amount of uh, recycle in poundage. And he was saying, well, I never heard of that. So, you know, I mean, uh, it just, uh, I mean, <laughs> it's, uh, it's hard to try to get anything across in this town to, to some of the people in it that work here that, uh, you know, we are paying wages for every one of you up here. And we'd like to be listened to. And uh, I know a lot of eyes roll every time I come up here. But uh, so be it. I mean, I'm strong enough and I got broad shoulders and I can live with that. So keep rolling your eyes and doing whatever you're doing. And, but I'd just like you to know that uh, this is something that I brought up to Mr. T years ago. And it was a profitable thing. And uh, he kind of trudged it off like, oh, well, whatever, you know, it's no big deal. So, you know, that's story. Is there anyone in the else in the audience that has any comments at this point in the meeting? I'm going to start with our resolutions and ask Mrs. Knight to read resolution RA 2018. Resolution number RA 2018. Resolution authorizing the Director of Public Service and Safety of the City of Troy, Ohio to advertise for bids and enter into a contract for the water treatment plant clarifier drives re rebuild project. Cost not to exceed $200,000. This is the first reading. Are there any comments or questions from council? Move for suspension. Second. It's been moved by Mr. Kendall and seconded by Mr. Twiss to suspend the rules. Mrs. Knight, please call the roll. Mr. Twilliger? Yes. Mr. Sievert? Yes. Mr. Heath? Yes. Mr. Swayzer? Yes. Mr. Kendall? Yes. Mrs. Oda? Yes. Mr. Phillips? Yes. Mr. Lutz? Yes. Mr. Twiss? Yes. Move to adopt. Second. It's been moved by Mr. Swayzer and seconded by Mr. Twiss to adopt the resolution. Mrs. Knight, please call the roll. Mr. Sievert? Yes. Mr. Heath? Yes. Mr. Swayzer? Yes. Mr. Kendall? Yes. Mrs. Oda? Yes. Mr. Phillips? Yes. Mr. Lutz? Yes. Mr. Twiss? Yes. <coughs> Mr. Twilliger? Yes. Resolution is adopted. Mrs. Knight, please read resolution R9-2018. Resolution number R9-2018. Resolution authorizing the Director of Public Service and Safety of the City of Troy, Ohio to advertise for bids and enter into a contract for the McKaig Road Improvement Project Phase 4. Cost not to exceed $1,875,000. First reading. Are there any questions or comments from Council? Move for suspension. Second. It's been moved by Mr. Phillips 
and seconded by Mr. Schweizer to suspend the rules. Mrs. Knight, please call the roll. Mr. Heath? Yes. Mr. Schweizer? Yes. Mr. Kendall? Yes. Mrs. Oda? Yes. Mr. Phillips? Yes. <coughs> Mr. Lutz? Yes. Mr. Twiss? Yes. Mr. Twilliger? Yes. Mr. Sievert? Yes. Move to adopt. Second. It's been moved by Mr. Schweizer and seconded by Mr. Kendall to adopt the resolution. Mrs. Knight, please call the roll. Mr. Schweizer? Yes. Mr. Kendall? Yes. Mrs. Oda? Yes. Mr. Phillips? Yes. Mr. Lutz? Yes. Mr. Twiss? Yes. Mr. Twilliger? Yes. Mr. Sievert? Yes. Mr. Heath? Yes. Resolution is adopted. Mrs. Knight, please read resolution R10. 2018. Resolution number R10 2018. Resolution authorizing the Director of Public Service and Safety of the City of Troy, Ohio to advertise for bids and enter into a contract for the Miami Shores Golf Course Clubhouse renovation project. This uh, cost not to exceed $1,710,000. First reading. Are there any comments or questions from Council? Madam President. Got a question? I have a comment. As this is not emergency um, legislation, I'd like to see it go to a second hearing. Is there any objections to a second reading? Okay, so ordered, this will go to a second reading. Move on to ordinances and ask Mrs. Knight to read ordinance 09 2018. I'm sorry, 013 2018. Ordinance number 013-2018, Ordinance Amending Section 1137.08F of the Codified Ordinances of the City of Troy, Ohio, regarding the Board of Zoning Appeals Standards for Variances. This has been recommended for approval by the Troy Planning Commission. It had a public hearing this evening. A committee meeting has been set for this coming Wednesday at 5 p.m. And this will go to a third reading then. Mrs. Knight, please read Ordinance 016, 2018. Ordinance number 016, 2018, an ordinance amending Chapter 171 of the City of Troy, Ohio codified ordinances to amend sections 171.03, 171.062, 171.063, 171.07, and 171.10 of the Troy codified ordinances and declaring an emergency. This is a companion piece adopted at the prior council meeting related to updating income tax code provisions to comply with the state budget bill. First reading. Are there any comments or questions from council? Move for suspension. Second. It's been moved by Mr. Kendall and seconded by Mr. Schweizer to suspend the rules. Mrs. Knight, please call the roll. <coughs> Mr. Kendall? Yes. Mrs. Oda? Yes. Mr. Phillips? Yes. Mr. Lutz? Yes. Mr. Twist? Yes. Mr. Twilliger? Yes. Mr. Sievert? Yes. Mr. Heath? Yes. Mr. Schweizer? Yes. Move to adopt. Second. Second. It's been moved by Mr. Schweizer and seconded by Mr. Twist to adopt the ordinance. Mrs. Knight, please call the roll. Mrs. Oda? Yes. Mr. Phillips? Yes. Mr. Lutz? Yes. Mr. Twist? Yes. Mr. Twilliger? Yes. Mr. Sievert? Yes. Mr. Heath? Yes. Mr. Swayzer? Yes. Mr. Kendall? Yes. Ordinance is adopted. Mrs. Knight, please read Ordinance 017-2018. Ordinance number 017-2018, Ordinance authorizing the use of an area of the Paul G. Duke Park for a 2018 Troy Mountain Bike Area event. Notwithstanding conflicting provisions of the codified ordinances of the City of Troy, Ohio. This is an event that will take place uh, July 13 through 15, and the notwithstanding will permit camping to take place, including the date of uh, July 13, first reading. Are there any questions from Council? Move for suspension. Second. It's been moved by Mr. Phillips and seconded by Mr. Twist to suspend the rules. Mrs. Knight, please call the roll. Mr. Phillips? Yes. Mr. Lutz? Yes. Mr. Twist? Yes. Mr. Twilliger? Yes. Mr. Sievert? Yes. Mr. Heath? Yes. Mr. Swayzer? Yes. Mr. Kendall? Yes. Mrs. Oda? Yes. Move for adoption. Second. 
It's been moved by Mr. Phillips and seconded by Mr. Kendall to adopt the ordinance. Mrs. Knight, please call the roll. Mr. Lutz? Yes. Mr. Twist? Yes. Mr. Twilliger? Yes. Mr. Sievert? Yes. Mr. Heath? Yes. Mr. Swayzer? Yes. Mr. Kendall? Yes. Mrs. Oda? Yes. Mr. Phillips? Yes. Ordinance is adopted. That completes the business portion of tonight's meeting. Mrs. Knight, are there any communications or announcements? Just a reminder about filing financial disclosure statements, that is all. Mayor Beamish, do you have any comments this evening? No additional comments, Madam President. Director of Public Service and Safety, Mr. Titterington, any comments? Mr. T. Uh, nothing this evening, thank you, ma'am. Our City Auditor, Mr. Friggy, any comments? Thank you, Madam President, I have nothing at this time. Okay. Director of Law, Mr. Kerber, any comments this evening? It appears we're on a roll, so I'm going to go with it. I have no comments. <laughs> I'll break the, I'll break the <laughs> monotony then here. Um, I've got a question and then a comment. Um, does the fire department have a written policy regarding which policy, which hospital a transport is made to and in an, like other than a life or death situation, does the patient have a choice as to which hospital? I see the uh, chief Matt, here. Matt, can answer that. I know okay. generally we will take somebody to the nearest hospital and the, you know, to, to reduce response time as, as much as possible. Right. Does uh, the, under our protocol, it can, please to, step to the mic, well, thank you. Under our operating protocols, we have to take to the closest, most appropriate, so. The there, are, there are circumstances where we would take elsewhere. Okay. So it's never a patient's choice is regarding like who their insurance is with or occasionally if it, it, if it involves the treatment of that patient and say they're under um, say they had surgery or they're under treatment for something that's currently affecting them, then we would take that into consideration for if that doctor or physician or attending physician is at a hospital, say in Kettering or Miami Valley, then we'll take that circumstance. But if it's a separate issue and they're just saying, hey, my family practices, we have to take them to the closest, most appropriate. Okay. Um, that question came up, um, and I was just unclear as to exactly what the, you know, what the policy was, and I didn't know if there was any place we could check to, <coughs> that it was ever in... Is it on the website or is it anywhere that, that someone could look at that, it that and question is, see? It's came up a lot of, of late. Yeah. And uh, being that we will have two hospital systems in the near future, we would not be opposed if somebody is, is adamant that, you know, they would like to go to Upper Valley versus Kettering. Um, we, would, we would honor that. Okay. Because they are, of course, it's not a life or death. Right. Sure. That's what sure. I said. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Also, I would like to uh, just make a brief comment um, regarding the comment that was made concerning spending money at the shores versus for our social services. Um, I believe the city has an obligation to maintain their facilities just like your organization has an obligation to maintain their services and their facilities. and. I think that a lot of us around this council table um, donate probably on a pretty regular basis to our social agencies. And so I don't, I mean, I don't think that the city can actually hand over a check to, uh, to an organization uh, simply because there's a need out there. That's why the social services exist. So I just wanted to maybe clarify a little bit that just because we vote to maintain our city services doesn't necessarily mean that we're not in favor of what's going on in the social um, services aspect of the city. I think we're all sympathetic to what's happening out there. and But we're spending taxpayer money and we're not at liberty necessarily to spend that on any place that we choose to spend it. That's up to us privately to do that. So I just wanted to maybe clarify that a little bit. Are there council, any comments from other council members this evening? Yes, ma'am. Yes, Mr. Lutz. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Um, one of the 
items that I brought up at the first of the year kind of uh, brainstorming session we had was the establishment of a countywide two-on-one system. Well, last week, uh, Senator Beagle had a meeting, and I was happy to see Mr. Titrington there at that meeting. And we had a lot of uh, human service agencies there. Uh, there's still a lot of work to do, but we're probably as close to a countywide two-on-one system to serve our communities as we've, ever, as we've ever been, and I'm happy to see that progress. And I want to thank Mr. Titrington for being there. Thank you. Any other council members have any comments? Any comments from city staff this evening? Any comments from the audience? Seeing none then, thank you all for attending tonight's meeting. Have a safe and peace-filled week. Meeting